Baba says, remain happy on seeing every scene of the drama and you will never be caught up in the attraction of anything good or bad. Now you see that um, we are trained to uh, think of everything as good and bad, right and wrong, light and dark. So that is the conditioning we have. But do we really know whether something is good or bad? Because, you know, it's a, it's a very long drama. <laughs> And what looks like a good thing today will not look like a good thing tomorrow. But the thing is, with our limited intellects, we always want to label anything and everything that comes in front of us immediately as good or bad. And Baba is giving us the knowledge of the drama. And what is the knowledge of the drama? Nothing is good, nothing is bad, it just is. It is what it is. And the knowledge of the drama is, you are a happy soul, you can stay happy in every scene. The scene is always, you know, beneficial and accurate. Baba uses these two words for the drama, which are very interesting. He uses drama kalyan kari hai. So, whatever is, uh, so there is benefit in everything. And the second thing Baba, uh, the second word that Baba uses to describe drama is, drama is accurate. So, it is accurate. Accurate is not perfect. It is accurate. Accurate is not ideal, but it is accurate. Accurate means um, on point in accordance with the laws. So it is working according to the laws and according to the laws it is accurate. And then the second thing is, there is benefit in everything, whether I can see it or not see it. And then the third thing is, I am a happy soul, so I can watch every scene or be in every scene or respond to every scene by remaining happy. And Baba says that you will not be caught up in the attraction of good and bad, if you follow this approach, what is the attraction of good and bad? Now, the moment you think this is a good thing, you start getting attached to it. And the moment you think it is a bad thing, you start resisting it. And both these energies are not, uh, will not help you in the long run. So, Baba says, don't go into this attraction of good and bad. Just hold the knowledge of drama, the knowledge of soul in your buddhi and just remain happy while watching every scene. Don't label the scene. This is a good scene, this is a bad scene. Have you seen what happens when you start labeling? As soon as you label this is good or this is bad, as soon as you think this is good, you are attached to it. And the next thing you know is you are fearful that you might lose it. And when you say it's a bad thing, you start resisting it. There are negative thoughts. You start feeling bad about it. All of that starts. So, Baba says, remain happy while watching every scene. I will share one incident with you. So, there was this 
one sister and I'm talking about some six, six years back. So every day she would tell me, I have a land and that land is not getting sold. I'm not able to find a buyer for it. And I'm going through a financial crisis and I want that land to sell. And um, I want to use the money. And in that deal, uh, most of it will be cash. So I will obviously use the money and I need it. But then, um, and then she would tell me, why don't you tell Baba, Baba listens to you more. So you tell Baba that my land should get sold. So I said, okay, I will tell Baba. I told Baba, <laughs> but then it didn't get sold. And then <laughs> she would every day tell me, you are not doing your work, you're not telling Baba. And then she would say, oh, Baba is not helping me. Why is Baba not looking at things? Why is Baba not understanding? I need the money. I need the money. So I said, okay, Baba is listening, but uh, he will do it. Baba is never, you know, late or early. He is on time. So uh, you must trust the drama, trust Baba. So she would say, all this, you know, this trust drama, trust Baba is only for saying, you know, when things don't go your way, you have to use the knowledge of drama. So you have to put a full stop. So it's all about when practically things are not your way. So, um, so she wouldn't understand and she would always talk about Gyan from a very superficial point of view. But then what happened is after some years, two years or something, she, uh, there was demonetization. And then uh, when she heard the news, she called me and she said, Didi, uh, you thank Baba from my side and offer Bhog. So, <laughs> so I said, why? So she said, you see that land, I was always telling you, na, ask Baba to have it sold. Now, had it been sold, I would have so much of cash and how would I, <laughs> how would I change it? And it would be such a trouble. I have nobody at home, not my husband. My sons are also outside and it would have been a headache. So it's great that it didn't get sold. And now I really literally don't have any cash at home. So I don't have to go and change it. So then I told her, you see, it's not like Baba says that just because, you know, sometimes the way she told that when things are not going your way, when things are rough and bad, then you use the knowledge of drama just to feel good or bad about it. But no, it's not like that. It, the drama, so actually, Everything is beneficial in the long run. And truly you have the capacity to remain happy in every scene. And everything is accurate. But the problem is not the scene. The problem is our conditioning of labeling everything as good and bad. And we have this habit and we have inculcated this habit for so long that anything happens the first thing you do is you think whether it's a good thing or a bad thing and then as soon as you think about it from your limited intellect you label it and then you start your own chain of thoughts and feelings and vibrations which add to the damage or you know which swerve the flow so you are uh, you create it in a manner as you perceive it so if you see it's a good thing then you start creating the energy of attachment and fear and then you that's also negatively swerving it and then if you uh, create the thought it's bad then obviously you are creating negative thoughts but you know the thing is if you think it's a good thing also you don't have the capacity to think positive about it so you know when you think it's a good thing then the second thing you think is I shouldn't lose it and then the third thing is you start feeling fearful about it 
So Baba says that get rid of this habit of labeling everything as good and bad and getting caught up in that attraction of good and bad. So attraction of what? So the buddhi gets pulled into you know churning over it, the mind gets pulled into thinking about it in a certain way and then thought and the karma you do through your buddhi will you know it will create your karma, your sanskar, your destiny, everything. So this is why this is something that Baba tells and um, uh, and you see that Baba has given knowledge about the self, yes, and knowledge about the self means I am not who I think I am. So Baba has told us who you really are. Then Baba has given us knowledge about God. So God is not who you think he is. So he told us who God really is, what does he say, what does he uh, do, how is he, what are his qualities. So that's knowledge. What is knowledge? Knowledge is bringing, a, bringing you, pulling you out from who you think or what you think to what it, what it, is, what it really is. So that is knowledge. So, Baba has given us the knowledge of uh, the self, Baba has given us the knowledge of Baba and Baba has given us the knowledge of drama. So the way you think things are or you know how you are trained to think about events, that's not the way it is or the way you are taught to think about the past and the future, it is not like that. So Baba has given us the knowledge of the cycle and the knowledge of the accuracy and benevolence of the scene of drama which we earlier did not have. And just like every point of knowledge has to be imbibed, so this knowledge of the accuracy and benevolence of drama is also to be imbibed. So you have to churn over it, you have to uh, take power from Baba and Baba always says that the more you have yoga with Baba, dharana becomes easier. So the more we have yoga with Baba, this knowledge will sit in our buddhi. And uh, from my experience, I tell you, when I came into Gyan, I used to, like everybody, I used to use this language of this is good, this is bad, this is ugly, this is not right, this is right. But then now in this journey, I have learned to not label any scene. So whatever happens, I have learned to remain happy and watch every scene as an observer and do the needful while refraining from labeling it. Because labeling and the what follows after that labeling is a very difficult energy, you know. So, once you start thinking it's good or bad, then all that thought, feeling, everything opens up. So you can stop yourself from adding to the turmoil. <laughs> if you just uh, had this big dharana, and this is a very big subject of dharana, and I had been thinking about this thing, and today Baba says it in the Murli, and it's very interesting. And then today in the blessing, Baba says that uh, use, uh, so Baba says you have to stabilize your mind and intellect in a powerful stage and set a program for them. So Baba says just like you know in the world people set a program for their time. So they have a timetable. 
so you have to have a mind table and a buddhi table so <laughs> you have to program your mind and buddhi you have to have a timetable for your mind and buddhi so what do you want your man and buddhi to be busy with now have you seen have you experienced that um, in the world when you make a timetable for work so have you have you ever been in a situation where you created a timetable for work so i will do this from 6 to 7 and this from 8 to 9 and then this and this and the other and then after some time your timetable is just hanging on the wall and what you're doing is not according to the timetable <laughs> so this is why baba first tells us that your man and buddhi have to be powerful because if you want to follow any discipline the first thing is being powerful so if your man and buddhi is not powerful so baba says if you don't stabilize your man and buddhi in a powerful stage so the stage is very important so if my mind is not in a powerful stage if my, my if my mind is wandering if my buddhi is not in a powerful stage then even if i create a program for it it doesn't help so first is creating a powerful stage of the man and buddhi and how do you create a powerful stage of man and buddhi so the man and buddhi are organs of the soul yes and the man and buddhi are organs of the soul and even when it comes to time table the time table of work also the soul has to follow so the first thing is i the soul have to be powerful and what do i need for that power i need the power of knowledge yoga purity so everything that baba tells us as shrimat is the method to make yourself powerful yes and when you're powerful then baba says even after that giving yourself a program is very important because um just like i gave this example in the murli also today let's say a land is very fertile very powerful but if you don't sow something consciously there then what will what will be the natural product growing there grass and twigs and you know all the wasteful stuff will grow there so it's just like that so if you have a powerful intellect what is a powerful intellect what is a powerful intellect an intellect that is powerful has the ability to analyze and churn and uh, you know uh, the, that that capacity to churn that's a very important capacity of the buddhi so you know there are many people in the world who are not capable of analytical thinking correct but so the intellect is not working but let's say the intellect is working you have a lot of capacity to churn but it is not powerful which means you are not able to regulate it so the soul is not able to regulate the intellect then what happens you start churning every nonsense on earth <laughs> and that's a very big problem so baba says so you know um, some people say that i have the capacity to you know overthink so thinking is a capacity of the mind so you're thinking too much thinking a lot but then you're not powerful so your mind is thinking all that it shouldn't think and then your intellect is busy churning on everything that 
it does not require any churning or that is counterproductive. And I remember there was this one lady and she came and she was, she was in a mess. She was, she had so much anxiety and so much mental issues. And then I asked her, what is your problem? And she told me that my problem is I can think too much, analyze too much. And um, so, and she said that because I can think too much, analyze too much, I have been in very well paying jobs until now. And then what happened is, when COVID came, I fell sick and then I gave up on the job. So, they were willing to uh, accommodate me for some longer, but I don't know, maybe I thought I will die, so I just left the job. <laughs> And then she said, after I left the job, I am um, just thinking and analyzing and my life has become hell because of that. And then I, I told her, so if you are an expert in your field and you did so well professionally because of this capacity, why did not you just use it uh, to write some articles or you know prepare some material? Even if you were out of job, you could use it there. So, she said that, uh, no, you know, I am very money minded. So, I thought that if it does not get sold, I would not write it. So, I did not write, I did not use my any capacity and now I am here and I am in a bad state and uh, God help me. And then, um, then, you know, uh, we discussed and then I started telling her that all day think about these things. So, you know, keep your intellect busy in vichar sagar manthan. Baba says, it is a gift if your intellect can churn a lot, it is a gift, but just keep it in your power. Do not let it run astray, do not let it churn on anything and everything other than you know the points of gyan. So, keep churning about the aspects of the soul, the aspects of the three worlds, about Baba, about drama, about uh, the four yugas, about uh, how Sangam yug comes and uh, everything you know think about Satyug. So, Baba says keep churning about these things, keep churning about points of Murli. And then Baba says, also keep your mind busy. So, keep your mind busy in creating, creating thoughts and feelings. So, you know, be very creative. So, um, when you go to the Suksham Vatan, so when you go to the subtle world and in Bhog and in other stuff, what do you do? You create, yes, you are creating a scene, you are creating uh, your, uh, you are creating that scene where you are close to Baba, you are creating those feelings for Baba and Baba says all day also, what do you do? Think about this, you know, keep yourself, keep your mind busy in this creative process this creative process of creating scenes, thoughts, feelings based on Baba's Gyan, based on Baba's love, Baba's companionship. So, just keep creating these. So, keep these busy and then Baba says, then you will never get upset because just like the old world is a world of sorrow and the moment you engage your man and buddhi, with the old world, uh, the result is getting upset. Similarly, when you keep your man and buddhi busy with Baba's knowledge and in these things, then your you will ne never feel upset and also Baba says you will be free from waste. Because all that waste comes when you have not engaged. So, you know, have you, do you ever knock on a uh, door which says occupied, no. So, Maya also will not knock on a door which says occupied. 
So keep your man and buddhi busy and occupied and then maya will not give you waste thoughts. So this is something that Baba says. But the thing is, these are jewels that Baba is giving. But do we put them to use? That's the big question. So today Baba is giving us these two very important targets. So, you know, making a program for the man and buddhi. And um, with this, you know, Murli Manthan uh, Seva, because of this seva probably it started but um, now I have a timetable for man and buddhi. So because of that um, I have seen that these two benefits A is you stay free from waste, B is you never get upset. These two benefits have become very visible to me. I have experienced these two benefits. So I can say from experience that whatever Baba is saying works 100%. And then the second thing is Baba says, don't get caught up in the attraction of good and bad. And I will tell you one thing. Yesterday there was uh, this brother and he was asking me, uh, what is what, what is Takdeer and what is Purusharth? So I was just telling him that, you know, if, uh, if you listen to the Murli and still you don't do anything or you don't feel like doing anything, that is Takdeer. So, you know, sometimes it doesn't even come to our mind that I should do something. Have you seen that sometimes you just read the Murli like you read the newspaper and then you close it and then uh, don't think about doing anything about it. That is Takdeer. So you see that if somebody has money but it never occurs to them to use it, that is destiny. So Baba says, your Takdeer is not like you don't have anything, you have the ocean. So you have everything. Yesterday Baba said that there is nothing else to seek and find. So you have everything. So that Takdeer we obviously have. But if we listen to the Murli and we don't feel like doing anything, that's also an aspect of Takdeer. And Baba says, if you feel like doing something, then, you know, creating that balance between what you feel like doing and doing it. Finally, that's Purusharth. So, that, that Purusharth we have to do. And we have to also awaken our fortune <laughs> by motivating ourselves to listen to the Murli carefully and start doing, adopting something from the Murli every day. And do you know that uh, Baba gives points to imbibe in the Murli, Dharana ke sar. But do we imbibe or we just say points to imbibe? So what, do you, what did I imbibe from today's Murli? What shift in my time, thought, the, you know, the distribution of time, thought, energy, wealth, what change in the distribution of that took place motivated by today's Murli? That is something we have to think about. And then today in the Murli, Baba says something very interesting. Baba says, um, so there are two things I will talk about. First thing is Baba says, I teach you to be Raj Rishis. And Raj Rishi means, I teach you a different kind of renunciation. And that renunciation is renouncing the whole world. And you don't renounce a home or a place, but you renounce the whole world. And um, it's very beautiful that Baba first teaches us that the whole world is not there, it is here. And how do you experience the world? 
through your buddhi. So it is buddhi yoga that makes you experience the world. So when you when you experience the world through your buddhi, if you just withdraw your buddhi from the old world, then you renounce it. And it is as simple as that. And you see that in bhakti, we have been running around from here and there and running away from this one and that one. But Baba says, you hold everything here and you have to leave everything from here. You just have to withdraw your buddhi from the old world. And Baba says, if you be this kind of a rishi, that is you do this kind of a sannyas, then this makes you a deity or raja ka raja in the future. So this, this is the meaning of a raj rishi. So when you do this unlimited renunciation, you renounce the whole world through your buddhi, then you become the king of kings or you become a deity. And Baba says, if you just renounce your home or you know you run to the jungle, you don't get anything. You don't even get the mukti that you are seeking. But this unlimited renunciation, this rishi when you become, then you become Raja ka Raja. And this is very interesting today. And then uh, there is this point that Baba takes today that Baba says there are two problems in the world. There is you are caught up in the chains of vices and the chain of bhakti. So there are two chains in which you are caught up, the chain of vices and the chains of bhakti. And you see that vices have their own logic. Yes, vices have their own logic. And um, so Baba says, Mat. So Baba says, Shri Mat. So Baba says, I give you the opinion and direction which makes you a deity. But vices also give us opinion and direction. And bhakti also gives us opinion and direction, doesn't it? So just like Baba gives us opinion and directions, bhakti also gives us opinions and directions, and vices also give us opinion and directions. So what is the opinion of vices? So if you look at, have you heard the vice of lust speaking? So just like Baba speaks, the vice of lust also speaks. <laughs> How does it speak? It says, only if you engage in lust, all your problems will get solved. Yes, everything has a, a physical solution, a sensual solution to it. And that is the voice of lust. The voice of anger is, if you just get angry, everything will get solved. The voice of greed is only if you had more money, everything will be okay. The voice of attachment is only if this person was, this person uh, said, I love you in return, everything will be okay. <laughs> and the voice of ego is only if I had more labels, more titles, more position, you know, better physical health, this, that, everything will be okay. But Baba says, it doesn't get okay like that. You have been using this, you have been working on the voice of lust, anger, ego, attachment, greed for so long. But it has not taken you any upward, only downward. But still you keep listening to it. And similarly, there is the voice of Bhakti. What does Bhakti say? Bhakti says, Oh, you go and chant this, you go to that temple, you offer water there, milk there, you do this puja, tapasya, you keep this fast, or uh, you know, uh, you just donate this much, or do this and that, or you wear some stone, or some uh, uh, just do some havan or puja to get your stars right, 
and then everything will be okay. And that is the voice of bhakti. And Baba says, these two things have made you wander for so long. Because you keep following these voices and keep moving in the directions they are showing you and they are only taking you into more and more sorrow. But Baba says, because of this, you don't listen to Srimat. Now, Baba says that only if you, if you practice soul consciousness, remembered Baba, stayed pure and did seva, you will become a deity. <laughs> only if you followed what Baba said in the Murli, you will become a deity. But why do we not listen to Baba? Is it that difficult? We don't listen to Baba because we are busy listening to these two fellows, Bhakti and Ravan. And then these two keep telling us to move in the opposite direction from what Baba is telling us. And then we keep fighting with them and we keep entangled in that. But what happens is our precious time of Sangam Yoga is just going second by second in that. And then we are not doing what Baba is saying. Yes, so Bhakti and Ravan, they are always telling you to think about people, places, things, you know, memories, this, that. And Baba is saying, you remember me, but we are so busy there. So these are the two voices that Baba tells us to be very wary of. And Baba says it is because you're caught up in these two chains, what happens with somebody who is caught up in a chain? They cannot move. So Baba says, why you're not able to move according to Srimad? Because if you moved according to Srimad, you will go to Satyug. And even, I'm not even talking about Satyug. You will feel happy and peaceful in Sangam Yuga only. <laughs> so your life will be all sorted if you just followed Srimad. And you will not even be waiting for Satyuk. But the thing is, we are busy listening to these two voices. And now Baba says, just discern. So do you know how to discern voices? Can you discern one person's voice from the other? Yes, you do. So Baba says, now you discern these voices from the voice of Baba. And just follow that. Srimad, the voice of Baba, and go to your destination. And uh, there is a question, what does cancellation of passport means? Cancellation of passport means you don't go to heaven. <laughs> you don't go to Satyuk. So your passport is cancelled. If you, Baba says, if you fall down repeatedly, then your passport is cancelled. So you will not go to Satyuk if you are falling in lust basically all the time. So Baba says if it is happening way too often, then uh, then don't assume that you will go to Satyug anyway. Even if you read the Murli, even if you do other stuff, your passport will be cancelled if you keep falling uh, because of the vice of lust again and again. Okay, Om Shanti.